These are a few symptoms of a possibly bad battery. Clicks but doesn't turn. If it clicks once and the lights go off, it is most probably a terminal to post connection issue. Clean your posts and terminals. Reattach them and make sure there is a good connection. Add a little silicone grease to the battery connections or spray some WD-40 to keep them protected from moisture. The engine cranks but slowly and doesn't start. Battery or charging system warning light is on with the engine running. The battery doesn't hold a charge. Your battery could just be discharged or a number of other factors can contribute to your car not starting. Before starting to run the tests, let's first check a couple of things. All your tools should be in good working condition. Even the slightest corrosion on your multimeter probes can render the tests unreliable. Most modern batteries come with an indicator on the top that tells you if the battery is bad. Sometimes that's all you need to check and get a replacement. This indicates a good battery, but let's test it anyway to double check that. Next, check if your battery posts and terminals are clean and free of sulfation or corrosion. Your wiring should not be kinked or exposed, causing shorts. Visually inspect for cracks outside, leaking acid, and internal cell damage. Make sure your battery is fully charged and the surface charge has been removed. You can do that by leaving the battery disconnected overnight, or by turning the headlights on, for about a minute. A fully charged battery shouldn't read below 12.6 volts. Go ahead and check your alternator fuse too. Fuses blow up due to a power surge, or they wear out. When this happens, current will stop flowing to the battery. This is well worth investigating if your car battery isn't charging properly. It could be the reason your battery keeps dying in the first place. And you keep guessing if it's a bad battery or something else. If everything is in order, then we can safely begin to test the battery. If yours is a sealed type battery, you can skip the hydrometer testing part and jump right to testing with the multimeter. To make measurements easy, it usually has a colored section on the meter itself. That tells you if the relative density is within the acceptable range or not. The density varies from about 1.28 in a fully charged battery to 1.15 in a totally discharged battery. A lead acid battery cell is fully charged with a specific gravity of 1.265 at 80 degrees Fahrenheit or 26.7 degrees Celsius. If one of the readings has a difference of 0.05 from the rest, it may be indicative of a bad cell that is contributing to a low CCA. In the battery industry, CCA or cold cranking amps is a battery's ability to start an engine in cold temperatures. The rating refers to the number of amps a 12-volt battery can deliver at 0 degrees Fahrenheit or minus 17.8 degrees Celsius for 30 seconds, while maintaining a voltage of at least 7.2 volts. All 12-volt lead acid batteries have six cells, make sure you check each one of them. I've checked all six cells and the results are well within spec. While we're here, let's just quickly test the connection between the posts and the terminals with the help of a test light. Touch one probe from the test light to the battery post, and the other one to the opposite terminal. It should light up. Test both sides, positive and negative. Make sure you're getting a good connection on the terminals with the probe. If it still doesn't light up, and your car has no power at all when you turn the key, you have a bad terminal. Replacing it should do the trick. Even though this isn't a direct test to ascertain the condition of a battery, it still gives you valuable information about a tiny problem that might have kept you thinking that you have a bad battery. Assuming everything is okay at your end too, let's proceed. If you don't have an auto range multimeter, turn your selector switch to 20 volts DC. Then connect your red or positive probe from the multimeter to the positive post of the battery, and the negative black probe to the negative post. This one is at about 60% right now, because I didn't charge it, just to show you that a good battery will start your car even when it needs some charging. With the probes still connected, it is time to start the car and note the values when a load is applied. In this case, load is what the starter motor draws from the battery to turn the crankshaft in order to start the engine. This is what a reading from a bad battery looks like.
you can see that the voltage went as low as 8.73 volts. It doesn't have enough cranking amps to start the engine properly. Let's find out how low a good battery goes before it is able to start an engine. There. It's all good. It went just under 10 volts, and it wasn't even fully charged. Your fully charged battery should not dive below 9.6 volts. If it does, but with some effort still manages to start the car, you can try adding a conditioner and use the battery for another couple of months before it finally goes out. Now, with the engine running, the multimeter should also be displaying the output voltage coming from your alternator. For the alternator to properly charge the battery, the acceptable range is between 13.5 and 14.7 volts. Turn on the headlights, AC, radio, etc., except the rear defroster. Voltage will drop. As you bring the RPMs up, voltage rises back up and almost levels out. That tells you that the voltage regulator is working fine. As a general rule of thumb, voltage with the engine running should always be above the fully charged voltage level or the battery will drain over time. If the charging output drops below the consumption level, you'll end up discharging your battery faster than the alternator can charge it. 14 volts is the magic number to shoot for. If you're within the acceptable range, you have nothing to worry about. Modern cars with complex computers and advanced battery technologies may differ. The acceptable range could largely vary between 12 and 25 volts depending on the capacitor's voltage level. Consult your car manual for more detail on that. If your battery is fully charged and the engine still turns slowly, check for voltage drop between the post and the terminal. Sometimes a bad connection here will cause a charging issue and the starter won't be able to draw enough power to start the car. Select the lowest DC volt setting on your multimeter. Connect one lead to the battery post and the other one to the terminal, and start the car. The voltmeter only recorded 6 mV, which tells us that the connection is in excellent condition. If yours reads more than just a few millivolts, inspect the terminal. Replace it if it's corroded. Otherwise just clean and tighten it. Repeat that for the negative side as well. We can also test a battery's CCA with the help of a clamp meter that measures DC current. This battery is rated at 280 cold cranking amps. Let's test how much amps the starter motor needs to crank this 1.3 liter engine at 24 degrees Celsius or 75 degrees Fahrenheit. Clamp the meter onto the cable that goes from the battery to the starter, and start the car. There you have it. Just above 200 amps. The battery was easily able to produce the required amount of power to start the engine. This reading would vary with changes in temperature. Here's some extra information that might come in handy. This chart will tell you the state of charge of a battery or an individual cell based on its voltage. Here are some reasons leading to the most common battery faults. These conditions lead to battery failure, premature or otherwise. That's it, folks. We've tried to cover almost all aspects of safely testing a car battery at home. If your results are inconclusive or all this is too hard for you to perform on your own, you can always take your car to a local auto parts store and have your battery tested thoroughly for free. I hope this video helped and you learned something new today. Make sure you check out our other videos too. Feel free to drop your questions in the comments section below. Like, share, comment, and don't forget to subscribe. Until next time, goodbye.